Hi everyone, if your laptop is running hot or if you live in a warmer climate, you've probably come across cooling pad solutions for gaming laptops. And today we are taking a look at the brand new Lano V12 Ultra RGB cooling pad, which now comes with its own control software for automatic fan speed adjustment and RGB color control. And it also adds three additional USB 3 ports. The cooling performance is still impressive and now it might even be quieter than before, so let's take a closer look. I reviewed one of Lano's earlier versions over a year ago and was honestly blown away by how well the cooling pad performed on the two gaming laptops I've tested it with. But yeah, it can get very loud. It's once again designed for laptops between 15 and 21 inches and it won't work with smaller ones. The basic principle remains the same. The foam kind of seals off your laptop and air is forcefully pushed through the entire machine, creating positive pressure that cools more than just the CPU and the GPU inside of here. Lano now claims that the new V12 Ultra, in addition to the control software and USB 3 features, is even quieter than before, especially at lower fan speeds. And since I still have the older base version lying around, Let's do a quick sound comparison. So it seems like Lano has managed to drastically reduce the fan noise, especially at lower RPMs, which is nice. The build quality and materials used are still the same. Black hollow plastic with a slightly rough texture. And honestly, it still feels a bit cheap considering the price. But on the other hand, it's quite large while still remaining very lightweight. The button layout at the front is the same as before. You can power it on or off, adjust the RGB lighting and use the scroll wheel to manually adjust the fan speed if you're not using the new software. The V12 Ultra also comes with a removable dust filter which helps to protect your laptop from dust buildup, which is a nice bonus that might help to extend your laptop's lifespan. It's easy to replace and located at the bottom. I also quickly tested the new USB 3 ports on the side and they support up to 5 gigabit per second transfer speeds, which is around 500 megabytes per second in real world usage. It's fast enough for most games if you're using an external SSD. You cannot use the USB cable, which is included, to power the cooling pad. At least it didn't work with my laptop. Now let's also take a quick look at the power consumption. Now I tested the cooling performance using my MSI Vector 16 HX AI, running Shadow of the Tomb Raider at ultra settings in 1600p in both the laptop's ultra performance mode and its balanced mode. Let's start with ultra performance mode. It gives the laptop quite a performance boost, but at the same time the internal fans are already pretty loud. 
Without any cooling pad, the system hits around 80 degrees Celsius for the GPU and 82 to 88 degrees Celsius for the CPU. The noise levels sit at around 59 decibel, which is already noticeably loud, with frame rates around 121 to 122 FPS. Now, using a simple no-name stand brings the GPU temps down to already 73 degrees Celsius and the CPU to around 82 degrees Celsius, clearly better than the desk setup, while maintaining the same 59 decibel for the noise level. With the Lano pad, you can already see improvements even at low fan speeds. At 300 RPM, temps are around 74 degrees Celsius for the GPU and 75 to 82 degrees Celsius on the CPU. And the noise drops slightly to 56 decibel, since the cooler also dampens the laptop's fan noise once it's resting on it. At 1000 RPM, the GPU temps hit 66 degrees Celsius, already 14 degrees Celsius lower than the desk setup, and the CPU temps are now down to 68 to around 72 degrees Celsius, already nearly 20 degrees Celsius lower, though the noise increases to around 57 decibel. At 2000 RPM, the fan noise becomes clearly noticeable at 63 decibel, but temperatures improve further. 63 degrees Celsius for the GPU and 66 to around 70 degrees Celsius for the CPU. The clock speeds now also increase slightly from around 2415 MHz for the GPU and 3900 to around 4965 MHz for the CPU on the desk setup, up to 2490 MHz for the GPU and a now steadier 4500 to 4965 MHz for the CPU at higher Lano RPMs. In games, this resulted in only a small performance bump, typically 123 to 125 FPS instead of 121. Switching to the laptop's balanced mode changes the picture slightly. On the desk, the GPU runs even hotter, around 86 degrees Celsius, with the CPU at 85 to 86 degrees Celsius and frame times dropping to 112 FPS because the GPU is now not getting the full wattage. The noise is much lower here at 45 decibel, but GPU clock speeds are also lower between 2175 to 2295 MHz and the CPU runs with around 2880 MHz only. With a simple stand, the GPU temps drop slightly to around 83 degrees Celsius, while the CPU temps stayed at 86 degrees Celsius. The GPU clocks rise modestly to around 2220 to around 2325 MHz, and the CPU boosts to about 3972 MHz now, and resulting in around 113 FPS. At 300 RPM for the Lano pad, the GPU drops further to 77 degrees Celsius and the CPU runs between 79 to 83 degrees Celsius, with the noise dropping slightly to 43 decibel. The clock speeds increase to 2250 to around 2347 megahertz for the GPU and around 4070 to 4172 megahertz for the CPU and the FPS rises to 114. At 1000 RPM, the temps fall to 62 degrees Celsius on the GPU and 66 degrees Celsius for the CPU, but the noise jumps up to 56 decibel. The clock speeds hold strong at 2317 to 2400 MHz for the GPU and around 4270 to 4965 MHz for the CPU, with the FPS reaching 116 to 117 FPS. At 2000 RPM, it cools down further to 59 degrees Celsius for the GPU and 60 degrees Celsius for the CPU, with clocks stable around 2407 MHz for the GPU and 4270 to 4965 MHz for the CPU, while 4965 is the maximum here. The FPS reaches 117 to 118, though 62 decibel is clearly noticeable. So in balanced mode, the cooler had an even stronger relative impact. While the desk setup runs hot and somewhat underclocked, even moderate fan speeds on the Lano pad bring temps down by over 20 degrees Celsius. They improve the boost behavior and add several FPS. The trade-off is the same as before, the higher RPM setting keeps pushing temps down, but the noise levels become intrusive very quickly. In the end, the effectiveness depends a lot on the laptop being used. It will work great with some models and not as well with others. It kind of depends on the ventilation grid layout underneath 
the laptop and the whole cooling system of the machine. Okay, so here's an example of Shadow of the Tomb Raider at ultra settings at 1600p. And as we can see, both the GPU and the CPU are getting pretty hot, causing the core clocks to throttle a bit. Right now we are getting about 101, 102 FPS in this scene. And I'm going to now place the laptop onto the Lano V12 Ultra Cooler and we're going to see what it does when we push the RPM to 2800 and wait for a bit. Okay, so now I'm turning on the cooler and putting it to 2800 RPM. And around three minutes later, we can already see it's now hitting 116 to 117 FPS. The temperatures dropped drastically, almost 30 degrees, which also affects the core clocks by quite a lot. Keep in mind, this is the balanced mode when the laptop is not using the full power for the GPU even. It's at around 120 watt right now. But when it was on the table and I was leaving it there for around 10 to 20 minutes, it became really hot and the CPU and the GPU throttled by quite a lot. Now, the Lano Cooler helps a lot in this case. Let's also quickly talk about the software. So, one of the main selling points of this new version here, besides the quite a fan and improved USB 3 hub, is definitely the control center for Windows-based laptops. As far as I know, that's the first time something like that is available for a cooling pad. If you connect the V12 Ultra to your laptop via USB-C and download and install the software, which I double checked using online scanners and it was clean and safe, the V12 Ultra can then automatically adjust its fan speed based on your laptop's CPU temperature sensors and you won't need to manually adjust the fan speed anymore. But I think it would be even better if we could also use a sensor on the GPU for that automatic fan speed adjustment. However, you can then choose from one of three predefined profiles or manually set the fan curves yourself. In here, you can also adjust the RGB colors and lighting animations through the software. Similar to what you'd find in most laptop control centers if your keyboard supports RGB lighting and it's really easy to use. One thing that bothered me though is the fact that the foam isn't attached to the cooler itself and if your laptop is very light, it could happen that the foam lifts slightly into the air, especially at higher RPMs, letting air escape the cooling pad without passing through the laptop. And that's it for today. If you've enjoyed the content, be sure to like the video and or subscribe to the channel. It really helps. Thanks a lot. Also check out my full review of the original Lano RGB cooler from last year if you're curious. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and tschüss.